Hello and welcome to the 30th episode of the EHW podcast. What's uh, EHW stand for, Simmons? Anyway, we are joined today with a, a with an actually rather full crowd of guests today and co-hosts. No guess. I, I lied to you. Ha ha. All right. First of and foremost, we have our lovely Navjack. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Hi. And we actually have Chris for once. Yeah, I'm I'm doing I'm doing great. Would you <laughs> say you that sad? you're vibing? Oh, absolutely, dude. Yeah. Awesome. You know, I'm, I'm happy for you. Yeah. Uh, we're also joined with uh, the lovely Alex. Um, Is he though? That's very rude of you, Chris. I try every day to be as lovely as I can, just for you. Yeah, I wear Jeff. the best clothes and put on makeup every day, Chris, for you. You God, never yeah. appreciate me. Honestly, though, Alex, you would be really cute in a dress. Chris, I want a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, tough shit, buddy. Check the prenup. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and... And uh, we Chris, might have... You're, no, you're definitely the kind of person to get the most detailed prenup ever. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's oh, taking my and it'd be, no, it'd be, Yeah, no, it'd be very specific things, like, in the case of a divorce, I want all my Legos. You can't have a single <laughs> one of my Legos. Okay, but honestly... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy um and uh frick might join us in a bit but he's not here right now and who cares? He's from stolen yeah, yeah. Someone and... in chicago stole him during the uh oh i hope that yeah i i hope he's okay i think he's fine i, he, I feel like that he's the kind of person who, who's like us that just doesn't go outside unless they absolutely have to <laughs> what would frick be like at a protest i really feel like that he no would just, no 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 he wouldn't not, even no, be protesting he'd really just be hanging around stuff. No, he'd be saying really stupid stuff. They're all like chanting and whatever. And Frick's like, yeah, f*** Reese's. Don't like, I mean, yeah. Well, <laughs> all right, well, well we, we have, we're, we're censoring the very beginning of the episode. This is awesome. Uh, <laughs> it's like five minutes in and there's already two swear words. Yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're doing what good. 13, that's why uh, I used it. Actually, uh, in a protest, I imagine would throw ice cream at the police. I, I, I feel like he'd pull an Eric Andre, honestly. Or you just hand out ice cream. He's like, hey, do you, do you just want some hand out? would give no, no, no. the cops. He, he would hand out ice cream with business cards for his YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, um, moving on from that train wreck, um, our, uh, the first thing I want to bring up is on June 3rd, uh, EHW will be doing uh, their second folding competition. Uh, prizes include some uh, cash prizes, premium memberships to the site, and I think there might be a couple of other items that will be added uh, shortly that are unannounced. Uh, get signed up on the forum, fold for the team, you have a chance of winning. Nice. And yeah, uh, for the first article. So this one is a very uh, short one, but it's in regards to Comic Lake S, a.k.a. the uh, the new generation of Intel. Uh, yeah, Skylake Sky 5. Like five. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Oof, Skylake 5. So, so this article comes uh, directly from Gamers Nexus. Uh, they recently got into a or they got into direct contact with uh, the Intel marketing team uh, in uh, regards to the fact that Skylake S is not available for like hardly anywhere right now. Comet Lake S. Thank you. <laughs> it's, 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 okay. Skylake. it's Skylake. The the ten thousand series Skylake. Yes. Um, so so here's a quick quote from the Intel marketing team. Um, That's ten thousand series, right? Yeah. Okay, it's all a bit of a blur. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I think this uh, I think the uh, the numbering convention kind of melted my brain a little bit. But regardless, um, I'm just call it ten nine hundred rather than ten thousand nine hundred or one zero nine zero zero KF. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's so actually, the uh, the one hundred nine hundred K. No, we're not doing that. We're not going that far. Okay. The one thousand ninety tens K. Yeah, so so let me let me let me read this real quick and we'll move on. Uh, we spoke with Intel regarding the general act of uh, availability with specific uh, comic like S SKUs at launch. 
The unlocked 10th gen processors are coming to market first, including the uh, i9-10900K, the i7-10700K, and the i5-10600K. The i3-10100 and 10300 are expected to be available shortly after the 10th gen unlocked K SKUs. Basically, un uh, unknown when those CPs will actually come out, and those are the ones that people actually really care about right now because those are the affordable ones. So, yay, that's great. Well, uh, that's all there is uh, for that ar uh, article. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, uh, honestly, not. I don't know. It doesn't really seem to be that. I want it out. So important. It's not like. Yeah. yeah it's not like I mean. Minute. I mean, from a price and performance perspective, the i3s are, I feel like, are the only ones that are genuinely competitive with AMD. Yeah, offerings, four core so. A um, also, keep in mind that, well, actually, no, that's not true because AMD actually has like mid East chips out now. Uh, mm -hmm. I was going to say like PCI Express lanes because, again, AMD APUs only have eight lanes at most. So that can be a problem with some systems. Do you know what's uh, actually kind of weird quickly to completely sidetrack you? Um, for once. The Intel naming scheme in terms of I something makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah. no, it's back to making sense. Like each each tier if, is if you just really add different. one number to it, which they won't because some marketing thing years ago, odd yeah, numbers are odd more numbers. than even numbers. Um yeah, the I three, four. You know, the I four, the I six, the I eight, and the I ten, if you will, which yeah. just sounds like Hyundai's. <laughs> right. I ten call ten nine zero zero KF CPU with hyper threading. Isn't that catchy? <laughs> anyway, um, it's yeah, for, for one, the current naming. <laughs> but uh, I just wish they could just drop the moniker of the tenth, you know, ten something something. Like, just I don't know. It just feels. Like a mess, especially when you get down to actually the i3 ones, like the 10100. Yeah, the yeah, it's just dumb. I, I feel like they're kind of in a position where they are not willing to ditch the i3, i5, i7 naming scheme, and they just have to continue. No, sure, sure, sure. But what happens if they just removed one number from the end or two numbers from the end? So they did an opposite of a... Um, because eventually they'll over, uh, overlap with uh, first gen i7. Uh, well, I forget, take, uh, like well they've got years. several generations to figure that out, so it's fine. No, no, what I'm saying is like, instead of going um, 10 900 KF, right? It just went 109. Uh, well, no, because they, yeah, because they couldn't really get away with it because, I mean, especially with some of their offerings with like, the 4790 okay. or yeah, also, also, well, Simmons, that's actually several generations old. They haven't done that in a while. Uh, I'd be more concerned with mobile where they actually have used all the digits like the uh, 8559U, for example. Right. Oh, right. Okay. How about they just call it the 10th gen 900K and the 11th gen 900K? Well, that's, that's pretty much what we have, though. Yeah. Right? I, just, yeah. Uh, just remove the first thing. two numbers. They're really ugly and they trigger me. Okay, so yeah, I, I, I understand your argument. However, you get to a point where people who can't read are going to get really confused when they look at reviews. And honestly, <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be awful for search engine optimization. Be oh, like, my gosh, yes. 10th gen 900K. <laughs> Did you mean 11th gen 900K? Did you mean 10th gen 700K? Did you uh, mean 12th gen 300K? It's like, it'd be awful. Yeah. Um, I, one, like, I thing, think... one thing that I do think Intel screwed up hard, though, was it used to be, back in the good old days, that um, the HEDT numbers and the like dedicated HEDT platform like X299 right now and the, uh, the mainstream platform, um, so Z390, Z490, um, the numbers wouldn't overlap. Like HEDT would start at 800 and mainstream would cap out at 700. And they're right. not doing that anymore, which means we have the Intel Core i9 10900K that's at the top of the stack. There's the Core i9 10900KF. That's not quite at the top of the stack. It's for enthusiasts. It doesn't have a GPU. The Core i9 10900T, that's for low power systems. Uh, which... The Core i9 10900, which is just, you know, for general systems. And the Core i9 10900X, 
which is completely unrelated for a totally different socket with totally different features and actually a different architecture. Wait, what socket does that CPU use? 10900X, that one's uh, LGA 2066. Oh, That's right, right. 8X. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they had that overlap, and that, that was a poor choice, honestly. Well. Uh, I have seen <laughs> actually a couple of posts on Reddit about people who got mm-hmm. confused by that. Yeah. And it also doesn't help that K and X are visually not but so distinctive. Like, yeah, they're they're different, but eh, not 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 the most differentiable letters as far as letters go. Yeah. And admittedly, the only CPU that I actually genuinely care about in the series is the 10900T. So, <laughs> yeah, I 35 watt. I mean, I don't doubt that they pulled it off at base clock at all. But. Sure. I mean, and honestly, if you start overclocking the thing, you'll probably get closer up to like the non K TDP. Yeah. But regardless, it's it's still neat. I think All it's right. funny though that because uh, so many motherboards uh, just do, you know, multi core enhancement, we're running at the single core turbo on all cores at all times with like maximum power limit, like you mm-hmm. know, PL2 cranked up to 4000 watts, uh, the time that it can run for like what, 65,000 seconds or something? Um, it, it's it's not good, because that means the 35-watt T chip is out of the box, and a whole lot of systems going to be running at, like, almost 5 gigahertz and using a lot more than 35 watts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they really... Well, speaking of 10th gen and power a draw and stuff along those lines. Nice. I accidentally made a good segue that was totally yes. planned. And that was a really bad segue from my part. Anyway, Z490 motherboards. Several Z490 motherboards are totally breaking the TDP guidelines set by Intel. Okay, so uh, many, uh, or, let's see, not many. There's like five or six uh, specific Z490 motherboards that are completely ignoring Intel's guidelines for how different power states handle uh, uh, power draw on the 10th gen high-end CPUs. Um, Specifically, some of these motherboards have been pulling an additional 40 to 70 watts above uh, what is been specced out by Intel. Uh, This was a study specifically done by Gamers Nexus. They they did uh, default uh, settings or power settings um, analysis for a couple different CPUs. And yeah, let's just say it's all over the charts and it's to the point where it's actually slightly concerning whether or not some people might fry their CPUs. Right. If they it's, don't actually, it's actually causing system stability. Um, I, I was talking with a, uh, a friend about this, uh, Jothens, um, who Jack and Simmons, I think, should know. Yes. Uh, I, I was talking about him. He recently picked up a 10700K Z490 system and He's not getting any of this because his board behaves nicely, but uh, he he sent me a DM and was like, hey, is 1.45 volts for Skylake like way too much? It's like, holy crap, dude, like that's like (laughs) that's a pretty decent overclock for Vashira, like AMD 9590, uh, 8350, like that, that kind of series. And like with, with Bashir, if you're going over 1.5 volts, you got to start using pretty intense cooling for that. And you're probably going to degrade your chip. So like either either Intel has gotten 14 nanometer mature enough that it can actually reliably hit these clocks at these voltages. Or the reason they're doing annual Skylake releases is because that's about how long your chip is going to last because it's just not meant to last that long because it's going to burn itself out in not a whole lot of time. Mm -hmm. Um, Throw in OEMs being complete idiots with regard to uh, boost tables and power limits and whatnot, and wow. Yeah. It's not particularly good. (laughs) So so some of uh, the three motherboards that uh, Gamers Nexus specifically identified as being the worst offenders of this is the, the Gigabyte Master the asus hero and the asus extreme um let's see they are notably running hotter 
just from shoving more voltage in to the CPU um, at just at, at certain load conditions is specifically what it is. So if you are running, like, say, a benchmark, that's where it's been uh, noticeably higher, just because obviously that's going to put maximum load on the CPU. But then there are some legitimate workloads where they will peg the CPU completely. And now you are potentially roasting your CPU if yeah. you had just have a basic tier cooler on your uh, CPU, which, which is just incidentally, uh, the new coolers are your typical Intel stock cooler, but they have like this kick ass black electroplating on it uh, or, oh, really? or whatever. Yeah. So it looks like a. Uh, Oh shoot! Who, who's the company that does that? Is it a uh, Dark Rock or well? Uh, well, there, so, there's a few. There's a few cooler companies who do that a lot, but it's that style. It's well, cool. I know. I know. Be Quiet uh, was uh, or with their Dark uh, series CPUs, they are all uh, black analyzed aluminum, and then with uh, Noxua, they now have their anodized uh, coolers, yeah. which actually look really good because yeah. they are. Yeah, but. Um, one of the biggest issues, though, is that because they're running out of spec, um, these systems are not going to be stable. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, okay, so like technically, e each of the cores should be able to do the single core boost clock, actually, the single core thermal velocity boost clock. However, it's not guaranteed that you're going to have a golden chip that's going to be able to do all of those simultaneously at low enough power and a motherboard that can actually spit out that much current from the PRMs. It's yeah, but see, but and I think that was potentially the logic that they uh, that the motherboard manufacturers were going with is you are not necessarily going to have a golden chips. But if we just throw more voltage at it, we're just going to get this ideal situation. That makes everyone ha happy. No, that's not how that works. Oh my god, that's AMD's approach to GPUs. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, well, it works. So, yeah. Um, in regards to the specific note, um, there are some of these 10900Ks that you can achieve 5.2 gigahertz at 1.29 uh, volts. Uh, that's not necessarily going to be a consistent result for all users. But it seems to be more common than in previous gens that you can achieve this kind of overclock on the CPU. Yeah. Um, Honestly, if I were getting Comet Lake, I would probably downclock. Like, yeah, we're we're gonna run four point five, and it's probably gonna use like half man, the power of some of these. But Honestly, then, why even get Comet Lake if you're gonna be doing that? Uh, because ten cores. No, nah. no, no. See, see, at this point, like after my I know this is several generations ago at this point, but when I got my 4670K and I put this into my my tiny computer, I undervolted and then overclocked. So I was drawing less power and getting more frequency. And right. that's now my challenge with Intel CPUs if I ever run them again, because that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how much performance we can get with while starving it of power. This is fun. No, I mean, it's the, same, <laughs> well, it's, it's the same deal as like your beloved R9 Nano. You drop the voltage. I mean, that wasn't overclocked it, but drop the clock a little bit, drop the voltage a lot. And hey, that's a lot less power for well, pretty much the same. Basically the same performance. Yeah. You have to tune it. You have to tune your CPU. It's like, a hey, you know what? That R9 Nano is still the favorite GPU that I've ever owned next to my 980. Oh, no, I mean, uh, honestly, it's GI really Matrix. cool. It's, it's cool and neat. Yeah, like, oh, he honestly just has a collectible GPU. I mean, admittedly, I'm mad that I did have to buy a mining GPU in order to even get the damn thing. But hey, it's it's still a really neat GPU. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's, there's, there's something I want to bring up in relation to voltages, and I'm pulling up the Intel data sheet right now. It'll just take me a second. OK, sure. Because there, there is no specification for voltages. Yeah, right here. It says operating voltage. And uh, the max uh, in spec is two volts. The minimum is zero <laughs> volts. Oh, oh. <laughs> and so there is no undervolting, guys. Uh, just and it, there is nothing that you know it actually. So uh, what you're telling yeah. me is that I can just clock it up. I can. Uh, I can over. <laughs> sorry, I can. Uh, you within can specification, volt to point out just fine. And if I undervolt, then I have to reverse the polarity of the VRMs. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> I, th I think I brought up the, the right number. I'm looking through all these tables here. It gets confusing, but yeah. Yeah, I can like, understand that. <laughs> like, yeah, there, there is the, no uh, specification. Uh, Intel dropped the uh, the, the uh, uh, integrated voltage regulation, didn't they? That was a Brockwell Haswell thing. Uh, Maybe they yeah. brought it back for Skylake X. I don't think it's on Skylake Mainstream or Client or whatever this platform is. <laughs> Hmm. I don't think they did. I think they've just completely ditched the the Haswell onboard voltage controller thingamajiggy. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they moved that back to. I thought they moved that back to the motherboard. Yeah, I, I think it's a mix depending on the uh, the chip. Because I swear I saw a reference to it with um, Skylake X, but I don't remember for sure. Uh, hmm. Either way, yeah, whatever. Um, it's probably it's, probably a good thing because Haswell should have overclocked better than it did, but but I guess what this comes down to until some specific BIOS pa uh, patches come out now that this uh, this practice has been exposed, uh, don't rely on the stock voltage if you get these specific uh, motherboards. <laughs> yeah, pretty uh, much. You should it, unless you are okay or unless your cooling system is actually adequate for a very severely overvolted CPU, uh, just based on the advertised spec, I guess would be the best way to state that. Yeah, get some Delta fans and a big-ass Bull Tower knockboard or something. <laughs> or, or if you've got an AIO, you should be fine, honestly. Uh, no. With the exception of a 120 mil AIO. <laughs> I don't even know what, what, like, what would the best way be to go about zone, uh, trying to find the best voltage for your processor i mean that it's a trial and error thing right but like uh, this I, I think this goes back to my logic is like some people will buy these high-end motherboards just because not really fully utilize them and hope for the best it's one of those mm -hmm. if you're going to buy one of these motherboards please for the love of god know what you're getting into with one of these things these are intended for people who are actually going to tweak settings um, yeah, so sounds like your 980 matrix <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, in my defense, I hey, did do it's still I, disappointed uh, in you. Buildsweight is still disappointed in me, but that thing is still running with two Delta fans strapped to it. So, <laughs> so you know what? I'm utilizing that GPU for the wrong reasons, but I know what I'm doing. No, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you don't. <laughs> I, mean, we, I think we brought up myself blowing up a fan controller at one point, but that's that's a different story. <laughs> I remember that story, but I don't remember any of the details. Basically, the TLDR is uh, the Delta fans draw, uh, drew more power than the the external fan controller could uh, provide, and I blew up yeah. a MOSFET. Yeah, that sounds like a fan <laughs> controller or a Delta fan. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but uh, yeah, moving on from this, uh, Ryzen 4000 rumors. Yeah, so, I lied to people about that on Twitter because I well, no, 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 no. I don't want to talk about that one specifically. Oh, okay. yet. <laughs> uh, this is uh, this article comes from Igor's Lab, uh, which I, admittedly I've never heard of before. But hey, here it is. Um, it is uh, rumors in regards to a Ryzen 4000 series uh, frequency. Okay. So it looks like the Infinity Fabric clock speed uh, clock speed will be base clocked at 2000 megahertz which is a 200 megahertz in increase over uh ryzen 3000 series uh if i remember correctly because let's see i jack you you probably know this better because i cannot keep the ryzen clock straight and i don't really care because i don't own one um yeah. the 18 month uh, 1800 megahertz f clock on um on uh matisse that's not like standard, is it? That's maximum because it's supposed to be half the memory. Yeah, uh, that's, or, that's maximum. The same and, as the memory yeah. clock up yes. to eighteen hundred, and then by default it cuts in half. But yeah. what and, it, and it can't even do that. You know, that's not even like yeah, assured. that's not even a guarantee, right? Yeah. So yeah, but, two thousand yeah, megahertz stock on a uh, if it's rated to do that on on the next gen chips, that's pretty damn good but that and that also implies ddr4000 support exactly DDR4, and that, 4, 000, uh, that was what i was going to say based on that is just that that means that uh amd is intending to support some of this ridiculous frequency ram that we're now starting to see on the market yeah which is yeah, pretty i remember when uh, ddr4 came out and it was like oh i got haswell e 
and I overclocked to uh, 2666 megahertz. Cool, dude. <laughs> and now in regards to specific CPU frequencies, apparently the 8-core variant uh, has a base clock of 4 gigahertz with a boost clock of 4.6 gigahertz. And okay. the 16-core uh, uh, gear, uh, variant has a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz with also a boost clock of 4.6 gigahertz. So, wait, that's a 16-core variant? Uh, yes. That is, I think, the same as the 3950X? It, yes. Um, however, I'm pretty sure the, the 3950X uh, max-rated boost clock is 4.2 or 4.5 gigahertz. I don't remember correctly. Mm, oh, my God. How does AMD boost even work? Because, no, I, I don't think that's accurate. Hang on. 3950X. Uh, Ryzen 9. Let's see what pops up. From AMD.com. What are they saying? They say that the base clock is 3.5. Mm -hmm. They don't max boost clock up to 4.7. So that is the absolute maximum that it will do at stock. And that is correct. The 3950X will hit 4.7 okay. for light. Okay, so, so the only notable clock. improvement then is just the base clock is 3.7 versus 3.5. Yeah, pretty much, which is probably easily done on every single 3950X out there, even at 400, uh, 105 watts. So base, that that's the same. That's no faster, um, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Meanwhile, yeah. the 3800X is 4.5 maximum boost, and what's the base clock? Not listed. Nice. <laughs> ah! Re oh amd.com let's check that instead of uh store uh base clock of 3.9 boost clock of 4.5 so that's an overclock of 100 megahertz basically on the on the uh the the the, the eight core so this from the looks of it as far as like frequency goes this is going to be very iterative and any speed ups are going to be in the architecture yeah um, and that's really the only thing notable that was uh, from this article here. Now, I want to get straight to Chris's uh, false rumors well, that he was spreading. <laughs> no, no, no. Hang on real quick, because Charlie D over at Semi Accurate has been kind of hinting at, like, we should probably expect 15, 20 percent uh, speed up with Ryzen 4th mm -hmm. uh, or rather Zen 3 over Zen 2, okay. which... Based on this, this ain't happening from like increased core clocks at all. This is purely from the architecture. Uh, so that's really neat. And that's promising, especially if AMD can like bend stuff later, like the uh, the Matisse. I don't even want to call it a refresh. It's yeah, it's not I, a refresh. It's just a few new SKUs that are like a bit leakier so they clock better, best I can tell. Well, I mean, so so Vermeer is basically it, it's also still on the seven nanometer meter architecture, right? That uh, sounds right. Yeah. So, so it just sounds like a, a revision to the seven nanometer architecture to make it better. It's it's a it's a top right or is yeah. it a tick? Which one's the die shrink and which one's the uh... it, the die shrink's usually the tick and the talk is the the revisions. Yeah, there we go. So Zen two was a tick and now it's a talk. So we was simultaneously a talk. Because... So wait, are you telling me that uh, Skylake is tick tock 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 at this point? <laughs> no. Talk, tick 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 oh no not even that it's more like uh broadwell was a tick skylake mm -hmm. was a talk and then the talk was just just had a very long reverberation can we just call it attack yeah tick okay talk, 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 tick. Oh, she's <laughs> making noises now talk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay chris talk about your your false rumors uh, basically, I'm just photoshopping CPU Z screenshots uh, <laughs> to say that uh, the 4950X has four way SMT confirmed solely because <laughs> I want to harass somebody on Twitter because it's funny. Have people actually been biting off on it though? Uh, a few people have said, like, whoa, this looks amazing if true. And then a couple of people decided who very clearly weren't in on the joke because, like, people with whom I. Uh, People who I interact with frequently understand that, yeah, this is a joke. I'm just harassing the lady who has explained in depth why Zen 3 will definitely not have SMG4 <laughs> and to shut up about it, please. I'm just harassing her because it's funny, but it spread enough that people who weren't in on the joke started getting kind of angry at me. 
So I just started telling them that, uh, no, my friend, the person I'm harassing, would not lead me astray and tell me lies about this. And she's been saying that it will have SMT4 for months. So I think I'm on her bad list, but it seemed funny. <laughs> I mean, this isn't out of character for you because, uh, wait, didn't you do that for uh, the... Oh, the yeah, maybe the, yeah. the six core uh, APU. Okay. The, was it the A10 or the A12? I think they still call it the A10, uh, 8890K. That was AMD's six core Carrizo chip uh, that was coming to desktops near you. That was back in 2014. <laughs> that was a good time. <laughs> I, I feel like, I lost, you know, I feel like I got involved with that. I helped you with the Photoshop and made it like a 24 core or some, uh, some crap like that. And. No, that that was a dude from uh from OCN who got banned for reasons. Uh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a fun time. Yeah, poorly photoshopping an MS Paint and throwing people off. All right, first of all, it wasn't poorly photoshopped. <laughs> Second of all, we got quite literally duplicated a section of the CPU and glued it to the the, the right half of the image. All right, if it works for AMD, then it works for me. Uh, <laughs> Oh, all right. No, it's because all, all the letters look the same. So you can just copy and paste the individual letters. They're all like motto space. It's great. Like It's really easy to edit. So it wasn't poor. It was very good. Yeah. So they should add a special effect on CPU-Z. <laughs> like a Pokemon shiny card. So it's harder to um, it's harder to fake that. How, kind of stuff. how does that work, Alex? What, a, what do you I mean, mean, like a, a holographic yes. monitor? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can move on now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore. Um, this next article comes from Twitter, the most reliable of sources, but this is actually kind of neat. Um, <laughs> yeah, who would lie uh, on Twitter? <laughs> yeah, gee, I wonder, Chris. Um, so <laughs> Intel has released the 72nd edition of the software development manual. Basically, this manual uh, has uh, laid out Intel's publicly available processor commands and codes and like the, the low-level microarchitecture code, essentially. Um, this uh, was released in regards to Comic Lake information. Um, specifically, uh, Comet Lake has the CPU ID A065X and A066X. Um, HLE has been deprecated, which I don't know what that means. HWP state now exists, which I don't know what that means. And... Uh, there have been several microcode fixes. Uh, that Honestly, been... the most interesting thing out of this that I'm seeing, Intel Xeon V processor 7215, 7285, 7295 series based on Knightsville arc microarchitecture. Intel's confirming that it exists and apparently people have them. Uh, the only reference I've actually seen to Knightsville existing, uh, Ian Cutras from uh, Anantech uh, managed to, I think it was at like Hot Chips or something last year, he just stumbled across this research paper or like this presentation from a, a university research group and they had been using Knight's Mill chips just kind of casually and that was the first time he had ever encountered one of them and I think the only time since then. Intel killed Xeon Fee and I'm sad about it and I still want to get a light, uh, Knight's Landing server. Yes. Uh, but anyway, yeah, woo, CPU ID stuff and various microcode things well, that I, I mean, totally understand. So like this, <laughs> this is just one of their standard releases, right? Uh, but what I think, I what I find more interesting about it is the micro architecture uh, or the microcode revisions that they they do. What Especially, about the macro code? Uh, we don't talk about the macro codes. Yeah, macro um, codes illegal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I and. You know, I, I just find that kind of stuff fascinating, even if I don't necessarily understand it. So uh, it's news because it's a new revision of the manual. That's basically it. It's a 5000 page PDF, by the way. So if you want to have a casual read while you're sitting on the toilet, this is definitely something for you. Yeah, I have to sit on the toilet a very long time. Um, <laughs> um, Chris, get uh, that laptop printer in you know, the dot matrix laptop printer. Set it to print out this entire thing when you're in Starbucks. 
and then like <laughs> walk away from your laptop while it just prints this out. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> it has a 5,000 page tray. However, I could probably bring in like an industrial grade printer, just no, wheel it no. into Starbucks, plug it in. No, 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 Chris, up. Chris, I, I, my, at my parents' house, we still have the old uh, scroll paper uh, dot matrix printer in the basement. So you might need uh, like a DB15 adapter to make it work, but you know, you can still pull it off. Okay. Um, oh, um, actually, speaking of Starbucks, because uh, I have intrusive thoughts about how to cause chaos sometimes. Uh, last time I was in there, which was several months ago. Oh, right. There's a pandemic going on. Uh, <laughs> last time I was in there, I realized that there is a gap between one of the booths and one of the windows because it used to be a bank, like not a Starbucks. And there wasn't quite enough wall space, so they had to put booths by the windows, whatever. Um, and I think there's a power outlet back there. I could just plug in a Raspberry Pi and just make it do things and probably illegal things with regard to network stuff. And yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it seems funny. It's just like doing weird things with computers in public places. I don't know. This is probably illegal. Uh, I, well, I, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> um, yeah, so moving on, uh, there yeah. is a, currently a NVIDIA lawsuit <laughs> that has been made public. Good. NVIDIA should get sued because they're NVIDIA is a bad company. They're not my friend. They, NVIDIA, NVIDIA made their, their things too expensive. I don't like them now. I hope they get sued out of business. Thank you, Chris. OK, yeah. moving on, uh, moving I'm on to the actual article. article. So there is currently a lawsuit that has been filed by shareholders um, in regards to NVIDIA accused of concealing one billion dollars in revenue from coin mining GPU sales as gaming GPU revenue. Um, one of the reasons why I threw this in here is when I when I talked about this before we started recording, it actually started a pretty good argument. So I want to hopefully respark that if I can help it. <laughs> um, as, essentially, what happened in back in 2017, when the uh, when the cryptocurrency mining boom was occurring, uh, NVIDIA was specifically selling their mining SKU GPUs as gaming GPUs. Granted, the GPUs were still technically the same exact chip as the standard GTX GPUs at the time. However, the main difference was there was a BIOS modification and also there were no display outs on the GPU. They were just basically chopped off, essentially, or never soldered on would be the yeah, better. I think the circuit boards actually have the solder pads for them. Right, and our, and LTT did a video where they did a BIOS mod on one of those GPUs and this just soldered on their own connectors, uh, and it worked. <laughs> so, um, so basically, the the argument that occurred before the recording was this is pointless. They are the exact same GPUs as uh, the standard gaming GPUs. Why can't they sell them as gaming GPUs? The issue is basically state uh, uh, shareholders and how information is disseminated to the shareholders. They're the really one, the ones who care about this. And the fact of the matter is, re the money that you earned wasn't reported correctly. That's wrong. That's fraud. And we want our money. Oh, OK. So I see what happens. So the way NVIDIA reports their earnings, they have like several different product segments uh one of them's like automotive for example that's where like the uh the tegra socks are going now all their little arm chips uh they've got data center uh but they also have gaming which is geforce and they have oem which is cards for oems so what nvidia did geforce cards got put under gaming because okay that's what that brand is for um, and that would include your off the shelf, like all of the off the shelf 1060s, for example, that got used for mining. Right. But NVIDIA put the crypto specific P106 GPU. Uh, I think there were a couple others, but like P106 was basically a 1060 for mining. Like that, that was the one that Simmons mentioned. That one got lumped in with the OEM segment. So what NVIDIA was doing was messing with the numbers. So it was like, look, our gaming market is stable. And the OEM market would take the, uh, I don't want to say take the hit, but like 
would be the less stable one once the mining demand finally uh finally got uh uh it finally died down a bit that's the one yeah so i'm not really sure what they could have done here other than so, just make a new segment based... for mining and their investor report which they so, probably should have from what i read um it's due to how they reported the sales because they definitely had they were de- reporting on a portion of the market going to some crypto supply. However, um, allegedly they uh, they actually netted um, or no, they underreported the cryptocurrency mining revenues by about one point one three billion dollars. Uh, and uh, it, it basically, they started offsetting the non-mining sales as gaming or the gaming sales with the mining sales um to say hey our, our gaming our gaming supply is still good guys we promise we're still making money on this where in actuality the majority of the revenue went to mining at the time honestly who cares investment is all like yeah it, but investment it's just it's for, like, it, it, it's quite literally the shareholders that that got mad about this and it, the only people who would be mad were people who actually have stakes in nvidia uh just due to improper reporting technically actually, does nvidia pay dividends i don't know uh find the latest dividend history for nvidia corporation common stock Oh, annual dividend, sixty-four cents per share. Oh, okay, so they actually do. So that that that's an investment that you would want to hold on to, unlike, for example, Tesla, which doesn't pay out dividends. So the only way to make money off it is to sell it, which means you're going to get a lot of husky husky fans who are very angry at you. No, don't sell them. You need to keep them. Otherwise, you'll make uh, Elon very sad. Oh no. So oh. that, that, that's basically all there is to report on that one. Uh, it, it, it's it's funny because, haha, yes, NVIDIA lawsuit. But at the same time, it's it's not really all that big of a deal for the standard consumer. I know yeah, I have seen people. Who, I know I have seen people saying, haha, yes, Inv- NVIDIA is finally getting the lawsuit that they deserve. No, that's not Wait, what, what this is about at all. We have to take down the bad corporation. They're yeah. mean to me. Why are they so mean to AMG? <laughs> RTX yeah. is fake. RTX is fake like the moon landing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> NVIDIA made you depressed. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to fight Jensen for this. <laughs> oh, that seems impolite. I will not do that. And in other just completely non-tangential news so does everybody remember uh the the fancy packaging that was associated with the 9900k yeah when you bought a 9900k intel gave you a free soccer ball so you could go outside and play some sports you big nerd correct so it has been confirmed by intel that the dodecahedron packaging will not exist for the 10 series nice i have something unique yes you do uh two (laughs) unique things actually yeah uh the the reason why i brought this up is because alex actually owned two of these boxes at one point and he posted a very edgy photo of both of them in the trash can um and it made a lot of people mad i'm glad i could do that for you simmons it makes me really happy yeah (laughs) so yeah Uh, yeah i mean i'm I think there was actually a backlash to that design, though, for some reason. Yeah, well, it's very well, silly. Well, okay, so from the from the like the the supply standpoint, a lot of people were frustrated because, re, this takes up too much shelf space. But who what cares, dude? That? It's a box. If you're displaying it, you have a dedicated display case, and yeah. if you don't, then it goes in the trash or you sell it. Um, it matter. It's really not that big. But apart from that, like, I like it. It's something different. You know, it's like, hey, you bought the the highest tier of Intel CPU. Here's something kind of unique and special about the packaging. One cubit foot of space. Uh, A cubit is a a unit of length, which means he's talking about a unit of area. Um, 
Well, one of the comments on this article says that he's happy it's going away. Uh, same for the massively bulky Threadripper packaging. Oh, so um, we just go with uh, this. The cool, the cool Threadripper case, though, uh, I would like to see somebody stuff a computer in that. That, yeah. would, be, that would be nifty. Well, uh, so, so that, it, ideally. So that was the thing. I was like, first gen Threadripper case was large, relatively speaking. Oh, However, but you still have yours, don't you? Yeah. I still have nice. it, but the, but the Threadripper Gen 2 uh, uh, box was twice as big. <laughs> it was Threadripper y. Yeah, yeah, no, it was quite literally like the same height, but twice as wide, and then CPU just exposed in the middle of the, of the box through clear packaging. It was pretty neat, excessively large, um, but it was still neat and it stood out because, hey, big box mean big performance. Am I right, gamers? I think if they, to like kind of make both parties happy, what they could probably do is use a very similar style packaging in terms of that square thing. Maybe make it a bit bigger, maybe make it a bit rectangular or something, but then completely change the color scheme. Right. You know, where instead of like how they used to do in the Extreme Editions, how you'd have all the standard boxes, but then the Extreme Edition was black. Right. You know, so there's something like that, but it's like black and gold and shiny and whatever and i would say the only problem with that is that would be a complete change in manufacturing because it's going from a blue plastic to a different color plastic at that point this hexagon isn't or whatever though he could deck a deck a dicky dog wrong yeah you're right um but honestly going back to the, thre- the, the thread ripper packaging the thing that made me the most angry about first gen is because it was a, basically a molded piece of styrofoam mm. that uh, butterfly open and then the actual like descriptive portion of the packaging was on this piece of cardboard that you had to cut in order to um open it so the my thread ripper box is basically packing taped together at this point <laughs> uh for my display purposes as i do my 9900k box is perfectly fine ha huh. take that amd fanboys <laughs> I, I honestly want to take one of those i nine boxes and turn it into a lamp because that seems funny. Uh, yeah, yeah. You just you just hollow it out and you cut a hole in the bottom and you make it a lampshade. It's a box. It's already hollow. Shh. Yeah. Yeah, box that wouldn't hollow. it wouldn't look that nice because half of the flat sides are glossy and the other half are matte. Yeah, it's funny. It would be really pointless, but it seems it seems fun. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of pointless but fun, hey Chris, you want to talk about the new Raspberry Pi? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, it's got eight gigabytes now. Uh, they released an updated model. I guess there's a denser memory chip available. It costs seventy five dollar dues. Um, it's it's kind of funny like the pie was $35 basically through its whole existence i guess at some point it went up to 40 bucks uh probably sometime around the pi 3 either way like 35 40 dollar computer but when they made the pi 4 um they went to like a totally different platform and instead of using like a package on package layout where they had a memory chip on top of the cpu die uh like in in a single package thingy system on a chip type thingy Mm -hmm. um hey god oh sorry i I was gonna seize (laughs) um so when they went to the new pi 4 platform they have like an external memory chip now so they have a lot more freedom uh working with it and Mm -hmm. they initially released one two or four gigabytes of memory i believe for 35 45 or 55 dollars and now there's a shiny new 8 gig model, which is uh, 75, which is kind of excessive because that's just the cost of like two Pi 4s with 45 gigabytes. Um, or sorry, $45. Two, but... <laughs> Damn. Um, you, you're well, doing great. Oh, actually, no. The uh, Pi Foundation uh, lowered the price of the 2 gig model at some point last year. Um, no, this year, like end of February. Uh, hmm. 35 bucks for the 2 gig Pi 4. So, for the price of two entry level Pi 4s, you can get one with four times the RAM. I don't know if that's going to be worth it. It's like stock standard Cortex cores. They're not particularly new, so it's not like it's going to be. You, you really can't use these things as like an, an arm knock. 
or something like that. Like, it, right? It's really inappropriate. I I really don't think these things. So are I'm actually like curious as to what the use case of one of these high memory Raspberry Pis could actually be properly utilized for. There's Maybe. probably like some. There, there's probably going to be some. Uh, or just some high kind of like. Program? No, no, no. But like some kind of edge compute thing where it's like, I just need something tiny, low power. It's out in the field and it needs to fit a big database in memory. I, I, I don't know. I, I could see that being a case. Yeah. But like, let, let's say you've got a camera hooked up and you want to run like a deep learning thing and use image recognition or whatever, but it's way out in the field. Cool. You can still do that locally with yeah. that much RAM. And, and, I, and I get that and all, but like, I, 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 aside from the fact that they are still continuously like improving on this and the shoving more resources into this tiny package of computer. Um, I, I, I honestly don't see the point uh, of having that much memory. Like those use cases that would properly utilize it are seem far and few between. Yeah, it's very silly. Um, I will not be acquiring one. Hell, I can't figure out what to do with my original Pi one. No, that's not true. I do have an idea for it now, but it took me eight years to get to that point because I bought that thing back in like spring 2012. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that what's going to power the thing that punches you in the ah, face? Shut up, Jack. Cut that out, you you bitch. That's a spoiler. I'll cut you right now with a blade. Yeah. Just because he said that. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to ruin the surprise. No, we're, no, because he's, I think he's going to actually like debut it. And then we're going to like just link the website so people can actually just trigger it. It's <laughs> like a bad idea. Can you, can you please can you please use your foot? Like, <laughs> oh, no, that would be no. kicking you in the face. And that's use not Nicole's foot. I only have pictures of that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized what I said. OK, so, so, so well, she, she posted them. I saved them. I'm uh, glad this is all being cut out. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, actually, we have some time for some off tar- topic articles. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Um, so the obviously the number one most important off topic article of the past couple of weeks is the SpaceX rocket launch that occurred uh, yesterday. It started yesterday and went through this morning. Yeah, they uh, it didn't explode. I already uh, I already posted. Uh, I, I met the astronauts at a charity do once. They were surprisingly down to earth and very funny. Uh, well, well, you have to remove that anticipation. Um, so, so the rocket launch. Uh, this was a quote unquote historic moment in um, the space industry. So, and Whoa, in, in, so, in some ways, it was. This was the first time a commercially provided uh, rocket transported humans into space. Uh, the the rocket launched yesterday at some arbitrary time that I cannot find at, uh, at the moment. Uh, it successfully went into space without a hitch. Uh, it was delayed two days due to a thunderstorm that occurred on Thursday, I believe. Um, but it got in space once it was in space and uh, in zero gravity. Uh, the They did a quick uh, zero gravity demonstration with a fuzzy dinosaur. Actually, Simmons, it's not zero gravity. It's called microgravity because they are in free fall over. Chris, there. you're an expert about micro things. Okay. Yeah, like no, 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 no. Alex, hit my finger. Uh, yeah. yeah. No. Alex, but, tell, tell the lovely yeah. people how your finger is doing. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> okay, good. But anyway, uh, the the the, the uh, spacecraft went into orbit um, to eventually dock with the International Space Station this morning at 1016 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, um, also in the process of the uh, flight, quote unquote, to the uh, space station, uh, they also did a demonstration of the manual controls of the spacecraft, which was pretty cool. Um, it was a success. There are now five astronauts on the space station, uh, three Americans and two Russian cosmonauts. Um, and yeah, it was a success. Honestly, the, the whole like lead up to that, it's like they're, they're driving the astronauts and they're 
dumb little spacesuits and like Tesla Model Xs and calling them Teslas the entire time, incidentally. It's not a car, it's a Tesla. 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 It's Tesla. like Tesla. the Virgin SpaceX launch versus the Chad Apollo 11 launch where they were driven in Corvettes and they had these kick ass, uh, you know. No, no, they drove like, themselves in the Corvettes. Oh, yeah. So why would you be driven when you can drive? Yeah, especially if it's a Corvette, aka the cool kind of car. I don't forget they uh, they stopped every ten meters, opened the doors because they got that was doors, so and weird. Closed the doors again and carried on driving, just to show off that the Tesla Model S, oh no, it was an X, has yeah. special doors, and you should it buy has one. it has special doors that can kill you if your car catches on fire, and Not also like that, engineers like had the to car go, over. Engineers <laughs> had to go out of their way to make servo motors that had enough torque to like e- extend a door handle with ice on the door instead of just having a goddamn handle a handle that other cars like Lamborghini and Nissan and Ferrari have had since the early 2000s yeah you can have with an entire motions. manually operated flush door handle you don't you don't need this but you know it's got to be got to be overly complicated. Of course, yeah, it's electric. It needs to have all the new features that are completely pointless. Correct, it's electric. Boogie woogie woogie. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> so next up we've got uh, something about chickens. What? Yeah, there's something about chickens in here. I guess the uh, link's gone. I think the article was actually lost. So oh, I know okay. we've been put- putting that off for a long time, but unfortunately, I think the chicken articles is dead. <laughs> Oh no, poor chickens. It's just like the dinosaurs had reported on. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I don't, I, you know, I, I want to talk about this one, uh, but I don't think we are technically allowed to. <laughs> Wait, which one's this? The uh, cell, cell towers. Ah, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, Bill Gates is going to suppress the truth if we talk about it. Yeah, something like that. And uh, I he want somebody to, to talk about us with his 5G. <laughs> I want somebody to talk about this next article, but not actually say uh, the word. What word? I, what I, word no, am I not supposed to say? You're just going to say it like you're boring. I, I don't know what word I'm supposed to say. Oh, don't is it AI? AI. <laughs> oh, okay, well, this uh, machine learning algorithm, uh, its only function is to draw in the margins of a sixth grader's notebook. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty clever yeah, yeah. it is oh, it does a pretty good up. job as well up. so apparently this uh, neural network was trained with 10,000 doodles of these 6th uh, graders uh, illustrations yeah. and uh, yeah it's uh, gotten pretty effective at it yeah it's kind of really chicken article it yeah. is and insane. You know, I, 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 it's actually kind of sad that we're announcing that the chicken article has died. That's uh, we'll, we'll find it again. You know, there's yeah. revision history in our document that we haven't changed ever. Uh, we can dig it up, but I cannot be bothered to do it, so someone else will have to. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's all we got for today. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening in. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining today. And uh, yeah, go join the the folding competition on June 3rd on EHW. It'll be fun.